it's terrific to be here for lots of reasons. Um, it's great to meet all of you, as many as I've, I've met, and get to know the uh, Pascal Sykes Foundation uh, and their board uh, a little better, and uh, to learn a lot this morning, and uh, uh, certainly, like all of you, to be able to hear Mia speak to us this morning. Uh, I've also got another reason for being so happy to be here, because uh, I live in Maine, and um, in February in Maine, uh, it's kind of chilly, it's snowy, and uh, it's nice to come down to a tropical climate, like <laughs> southern New Jersey. I called my wife this morning, and uh, she reported to me that it was 12 degrees, and I said, it's probably in the 40s here. She asked me if I was coming home tonight. So, um, I'm also pleased to, to talk with you this morning, uh, just to give you a sense that lots of the ideas that you're trying to promote and think about here on behalf of families and to think holistically and to think two generationally aren't just pertinent to places like South Jersey, uh, but they're also places pertinent to very rural places, oftentimes like Maine. And this morning I want to talk with you a little bit about um, a program that is uh, in its early implementation stages, but I think is a good example of how this transpires and looks in a, a place like Maine and how it's getting traction. Uh, before I do that, um, I think I'd be remiss if I didn't say a word or two about the John D. Gorman Foundation. The John D. Gorman Foundation is a private foundation headquartered in Portland, Maine. Our mission is to advance ideas and opportunities to improve the lives of disadvantaged populations in that state. Uh, the foundation primarily supports st strategies aimed at achieving large-scale results for uh, children, families, and uh, vulnerable older youth. Uh, of the roughly $8 million we dispense, uh, we spend annually on our grant making, it's aimed at advancing more strategic approaches that we believe can inform and advance practice systems and policy. Put simply, like the Pascal Sykes Foundation, we want to advance changes that can help level the playing field for kids, families, and communities who need it most. We believe in the power of families, we believe in the power of data, and, on measure, and believe in measurable results. We look for ideas that are comprehensive in scope and require people and organizations to work collaboratively in order to better integrate their work. We spend a fair amount of uh, resources on helping to build capacity and connecting people to organizations and others in Maine and around the country who have good ideas. We have a deep interest in public policy and in informing and influencing how public resources are spent on behalf of the folks who are at the heart of our foundation's mission. And one uh, effort that I think is beginning to embody lots of these uh, perspectives and orientations is an effort called Family Futures Down East, which is taking, I think, a whole family, two-generation approach. Um, it's set in Washington County, Maine. It's an area of the state that is known as the Down East region. It's home to about 30, 32,000 people, and in many respects represents the state's most unique assets and challenges. You know, it's a place that is known for its stunning beauty, its blueberry fields, its lobsters, its close-knit communities, but it's also a place that is known for its stunning poverty. Washington County's poverty rates hover at about 20%, and they have a persistent child poverty rate of over 30%. It is the place with the lowest educational attainment rates in the state of Maine. So it's a wonderful place to visit, but it can be an awfully tough place to live. That said, it is home to a host of people and nonprofits who represent incredible assets because they have figured out how to work together and effectively collaborate. In large part, they recognize this because doing so is the only way they're going to address the challenge of very minor and scarce resources. So these contextual variables, extreme need, extremely scarce resources, but a history of comfortable, successful collaboration really, I think, have provided an important backdrop for this new effort that they have, uh, that they have launched. Let me start with a, 
brief history of this uh, and some of its, uh, some of its components. Uh, about 2013, a number of folks in Washington County who have been working with families for years recognized that the only way for that community to establish a viable future was to think bigger. They needed to take a long view and reposition their efforts so that they weren't just addressing the challenges of poverty, but beginning to think about preventing poverty, not just for this generation, but also the next. They paid attention to data and research, and they recognized the obvious, which is that one of the keys to, for the success of both generations was education. For parents, it was the prospects of sufficiently succeeding in an economy, but only if they had further credentialing and degrees. And for kids to succeed, they needed, especially for young kids, the experiences of high quality early education in order to thrive. But they also knew, based on their relationships, based on their discussions with members in their community, with low-income families, that there were lots of barriers that needed to be over overcome. There were personal barriers that come with living in persistent poverty, the low self-confidence, the lack of perceived lack of opportunity, uh, and so forth. Also, uh, lots of the kind of practical barriers that uh, uh, poor people face every day, and that folks with more resources have a greater opportunity to overcome. The issues of transportation. Uh, the issues of um, being able to even have enough money to take advantages of opportunities when they are presented to you. And so with this kind of fundamental belief that education was the most effective way out of poverty and grounded in their experiences and relationships with the folks who they work with, they recognized that if in fact, even when presented with a higher education opportunity, people would only engage fully when their basic needs were being met and that folks would only participate in such an experience if they felt they belonged, for example, on college campuses and um, uh, uh, were comfortable there. So this effort was put together by a core of about six partners. Um, they include the uh, University of Maine and Machias, uh, the uh, Washington County Community College, the Community Caring Collaborative, which is a long-standing collaborative of various social service agencies that have been working successfully to address issues related to poverty for about the last decade and a half, uh, the Sunrise Economic Development Council, uh, a company called Axiom Technology, which has brought and expanded more broadband to Washington County, and they have been a uh, job creator, job trainer, and community educator in a very successful way. And also Child and Family Opportunities, which is the primary Head Start and early Head Start provider in Washington County. So it was these partners, and I can't stress this enough, it was these partners working hand in hand with low-income families that, this, that designed the critical components of this initiative. Uh, just to briefly outline its components, at the core is, of the effort is an opportunity for currently, at least, up to 24 uh, low-income parents with at least one child aged eight and under to attend the three-semester program at either of those two higher education uh, institutions, Washington County Community College or the University of Maine and Machias. These students enroll in a specialized six-course family studies program that is taught in the evening. The curriculum uh, includes courses in child development, finances, public speaking, writing, advocacy, health, and wellness. All the credits that they uh, achieve are transferable to further courses of study if they uh, choose to complete their, their degree, and they can be applied to some of these sub subsequent fields. Uh, those choosing not to pursue further studies at either of those institutions um, are eligible for training and employment opportunities that are provided by Axiom Technologies and other employers in the, uh, in the area. Now, when Family Futures Down East enrolls uh, these folks in these classes, their children are involved in high-quality early learning activities that are provided each night on campus by the local Head Start agency. Their evenings begin with a family meal. Uh, parents go to class, kids are involved in educational activities, and at the end of the night, they pick their kids up, their kids are ready for bed, uh, they have their PJs on, and they're, they're, they're ready to roll. 
Uh, that has worked so well. They, had, they are now designing programs for uh, children aged 8 to 14 because parents have multiple kids whose needs they have to meet. So these are the kind of core elements of the program, but equally important is kind of an array of supports that are wrapped around this core. There are designated welcoming centers on each of the campuses. There are family success, uh, family down east success coaches, which should sound familiar to all you folks. Uh, and these are folks who uh, work directly with each participant to create parent and uh, child success plans that embody a two-generation approach. They meet with participants uh, at least once a week to set goals, work together to pro problem solve current and potential barriers, and connect them to available resources. Importantly, they also match participants to mentors in their intended career fields. So what you've got is a program that is with a design and implementation plan that is informed by the voices of low-income families, driven by the core partners, and then supplemented by a range of other partners that span some 45 community agencies and organizations. And finally, it is important to note that this is also bolstered to a large, to, to a large degree by the willingness of various state agencies uh, to make data available and resources available for planning and, uh, implement and program purposes. So what do we do in all of this as a foundation? Uh, we do the obvious. Um, we have provided ongoing uh, uh, operational support and program support since the uh, beginning. Uh, further, we play a, a technical assistance role as well. Um, we have uh, been able to uh, 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 match them with uh, uh, technical assistance providers and experts around the country that can help them refine their ideas, expose them to other national models, and help them begin to more creatively apply existing funding streams to their work. We also connect them to national opportunities. Um, one is uh, they became a, um, a, a rural uh, impact site under the, with, under the Obama White House initiative, and uh, that has connected them to an array of both technical assistance and a learning communities with uh, nine other sites around the country who are trying to do similar work in very rural communities. We've also helped them to leverage uh, other national funding. I managed to uh, talk my old friends at the Casey Foundation into providing support for this, as well as uh, other local main foundations. And importantly, we have served as a role in the role of advocate. Uh, intervening and uh, having conversations with state commissioners and administrators, for example, to make the case for increased resources for this effort, as well as providing this site with greater flexibility so that they can use federal and state funds more creatively. And it's just this last point um, that I just want to stress before I close, which is, you know, I don't know how much you know about Maine, um, but it is not at least today, not the most politically liberal and progressive of states. Um, at the same time, this effort has garnered very important bipartisan support because of its focus on prioritizing education, prioritizing work, self-sufficiency, data, insisting on quantifiable results, and having an aspiration to really put a flag on ending poverty for multiple generations, and I think that has broad appeal and enabled a very conservative state administration to get behind an e this effort in a way that they may not have normally done, which I think, for me at least, speaks to the potential of two-generation strategies as a, maybe a common sense starting point for navigating what we all assume is going to be a very uncertain and challenging environment that we're going to have to figure out how to navigate over the next several years. Uh, and I suspect we'll have further conversations about this as, as we go on. Um, so with that, let me again thank you for the opportunity to share a little bit about uh, how your ideas are pertinent, not just for what's happening here, but for what's happening elsewhere around the country. Thank you very much.